Hi, my name is Fiona MacDonald. I was a student at Heriot Watt School of Textiles and Design in 2019 to 2020. I'm here to talk to you about some desk-based methodologies that I used in my own research. If you'd like to know more about me, please find me on LinkedIn where you can find examples of my research and other projects and career interests. Well, what is desk-based research? Desk research is a term that is used loosely and generally refers to the collection of secondary data or that which has already been collected. This is in contrast to laboratory and field research where primary or otherwise known as empirical data is gathered firsthand either from participants or from scientific testing. Lisa McIntyre will have been over many methods for primary research with you already during the course and some examples of field-based research are consumer surveys, interviews and focus groups. But did you know that there are desk-based methods that you can use as a methodology for your research project? In 2020, when COVID-19 hit, I found that I couldn't perform field research in the way that I had planned. So I looked for alternative methods that were safe in accordance with the regulations. This is what has prompted me to talk to you today about my experience of desk-based methodologies. Desk-based research can be used to investigate information that has already been published. This can analyse content and provide a review. I, I'm going to give you some examples of these types of study from my own research. Content analysis. Content analysis is a desk-based methodology that I use for coursework submitted in semester two and not for my final research project. However, I think it could work really well for the right project. Content analysis is a method used to identify patterns in recorded communication. This can be from electronic or physical sources, information published online, for example, web page or social media content, printed materials such as marketing materials, magazines, or even company policy documents such as code of conduct. Text, visual and or audiovisual source material can be analysed. It can be used as a standalone method or to add dimension to a case study. You can see it's a very versatile method. What is important is that data is collected and recorded systematically. So here's an example of the content analysis task that I spoke about on the last slide. I'm going to walk you through this example. My project was a group project, an illustrated web page critical analysis report of six fashion brands web pages that was to identify and evaluate the sustainability and ethical content, comparing and contrasting the content, word juice, compliance accreditation and memberships. And I'd like to draw attention to the first underlined word on this example, the word illustrated. What does it mean? This means that my tutor wants to, the report to include visuals of some kind. It could be a visual representation of the data that is collected, either in graphs or in tables, or it could be some screenshots or images from those brands' web pages that help us to illustrate the findings. So how we went about this was to do a full word count of all the web pages that contained ethical content. We also counted the amount of pages where we found ethical content. We looked at the word choice and the frequency at which these words occurred. These results were displayed in tables and graphs. These helped us to see the trends in the data, which we could then analyse. There are search engine optimization tools out there 
that may be able to help you with this. I advise if you are considering this type of research to have a look for those to see which might be able to help you. Similarly, if you're investigating company documents, such as might occur in PDF format, there is a way to find keywords within that document which will help you with this kind of task. Next, we looked at the accreditations and memberships. These results were displayed in tables as we weren't looking so much for how often the, the accreditations and memberships occurred, just what they were and how they compared to the other brands. Then we made observational analysis of the websites and their navigation. These results were displayed in a flowchart diagram to help illustrate how the user moves through the website, the user journey. Uh, a disclaimer here is that websites do change frequently and we actually found this during the task and had to explain inner limitations of the research. On this slide, I've shown you an example of search optimization tools using the Chrome uh, website navigation browser. On Chrome, if you go to edit, menu and find, uh, you can search for keywords within a given website and you can see that this example uh, uses the word repair. We're searching this H&M website for the word repair and you can see that it occurs once on the website and it's actually highlighted in orange where it occurs on the website as well. Now for the advantages and disadvantages of content analysis. You can analyse communication and social interaction without direct involvement of participants. So the presence of the researcher does not influence the results. When done well, content analysis follows a systematic procedure that can be repeated by other researchers, yielding results with high reliability. It's highly flexible. Content analysis can take place at any time, in any location, at low cost. The disadvantages. Focusing on keywords or phrases in isolation can be overtly reductive, disregarding context, nuance and ambiguous meanings. It can be very time intensive. Manual coding of large volumes of data is extremely time consuming and can be difficult to automate eff effectively. Literature review as a methodology. This is the method that I used for my own research project. Traditional literature reviews are considered background reading and give context to a piece of research. These largely take an ad hoc approach, lacking the thoroughness and rigour to be considered a methodology in their own right. However, during the background reading for my research project, I came across journal papers that use systematic or semi-systematic reviews as their methodology, leading me to research what was meant by these terms. A literature review methodology is described as being systematic in the way that previous research is collected and synthesised. It will identify and explain all sources of literature relevant to the study within the parameters of a robust search and data extraction criteria. So instead of taking an ad hoc approach to the literature, where you might stumble across something interesting that you might then decide to put into your review, the literature review methodology is much more strict as it uses parameters and criteria to qualify what is included, meaning there is far less bias within the review. Review methods are useful for evaluating evidence, theories, or the state of knowledge in a certain research area. There are different ways to approach a review methodology. Your approach would depend upon the research question and types of studies under review. 
Systematic reviews, for example, are often used in synthesising the results of a collection of studies addressing the same or similar problem using the same or similar methods. These are commonly used in medical research to compare the results of clinical trials. Systematic reviews are considered the most rigorous and often inform policy and practice. However, this method may become problematic when different types of study are included in the review as the results may not be directly comparable. In this case, it may be worth considering a semi-systematic review. Depending on the type of review, the researcher can use a number of published standards and guidelines. When to use the review method. Now, unless your review investigates something really specific, for example, the abrasion resistance on denim fabric, it's unlikely that you're going to need the systematic review. This method is really quite niche. So instead, I'm going to focus on the semi-systematic review here. The semi-systematic, otherwise known as narrative approach, provides an overview of a subject area and how it has developed over time in discipli disciplines, identifying areas that require more research. It can be used when there is a newly developed field of, of research which lacks a rigorous review, or if a rigorous review has not been carried out in the last five years, and if the existing research is fragmented across several areas or disciplines. A semi-systematic review may lead to the development of theories or frameworks. A scoping exercise, starting with an informal browsing of the literature, will establish if a review will add value. Now, as I mentioned on the previous slide, there are a number of published standards and guidelines for producing methodological reviews. The appropriateness of each protocol is defined by the purpose and type of review. Systematic reviews will follow protocols strictly, whereas semi-systematic reviews require more development and tailoring to the specific project. I followed the ROSES protocol, a set of standards for conducting semi-systematic reviews. Here is my aim of my research project, to provide an overview of the fashion design strategies that support environmentally sustainable business models in the fashion industry. Review protocols are largely split into three areas, searching, screening, and appraisal and synthesis. First of all, searching. I was advised to search at least three databases when carrying out my systematic review. The databases that you choose will depend upon your research question. If in doubt, ask your supervisor or subject li librarian about which databases to use. Below is the finalised search string that I use to search the databases. This search string went through a development process to get to the finalised state. During the scoping exercise that I mentioned on the previous slide, I identified a group of papers that I thought were very relevant to my semi-systematic review. However, at this point, I needed to come up with a robust, rigorous and repeatable way of finding those papers. So when I began to search the databases, I was looking to find those articles. You can see above that my final search string provided 549 hits. However, I performed many other searches with differing variations of the search string. Some of these produced many, many more hits. So you can see in developing the search string, I'm trying to address my research question to gather as many of those relevant articles that I found during my, my background reading, while also narrowing down on the most important and relevant articles so that my review process is viable. 
For information on the technical language involved in producing a search string, you can speak to a member of Information Services. So now that I'm happy with my 549 hits and the, and the articles contained within, I'm ready to move on to the screening. First of all, I screened the article titles and excluded those titles that specify industries or professions other than fashion, clothing or textiles and I removed 178 articles in this way, leaving me with 371. Then I screened the abstracts. During this stage, I excluded abstracts and keywords that did not include business or retail models, sustainability and the fashion, clothing or apparel industry. Academic journal articles most often have a list of keywords underneath the abstract. I removed 322 articles in this way, leaving 39 articles to be retrieved at full text. Unfortunately, two articles were not retrievable, leaving me with 37 articles. Because I had used three different databases, to search. This produced a number of duplicates. At this stage, I removed the duplicates, removing six articles, leaving me with 31 articles to screen at full text. At this stage, I excluded articles that did not investigate business models with a clothing design or retail function, and I excluded articles that did not detail fashion design strategies for environmental sustainability. This left 15 articles to include in the final review. Structuring my review was something that I pondered for some time, but in the end it was really quite simple. Much like the example that will be given to you as part of your course handbook, my semi-systematic review started with the title, abstract, introduction and aim and objectives. In other types of study, chapter 2 would normally be called your literature review, where you give background context to the research. But since my research method is the literature review, I decided to call this chapter my background research, though it served the same purpose. Next came the methodology and results and discussion chapters. You can see that I chose to pair the results and discussions together as I felt that this enhanced the narrative of my review. I displayed my results in graphs and tables detailing the amount of journals included in the review, their themes, country of origin, publication dates and methodologies. This data helped me to provide an overview of the subject area. I then go into a detailed critique of the articles using the themes I detected to narrate my structure. Chapter 5, my conclusion. I included my recommendations and limitations within this chapter. Advantages and disadvantages of the literature review as a methodology. Snyder puts it that by integrating findings and perspectives from many empirical findings, a literature review can address research questions with a power that no single study has. In other words, these can bring scope to your research. A review may lead to the development of theories or frameworks that can summarise or even advance the state of knowledge and or practice. Having a robust methodology, like the example that I have shown you, mitigates bias in reviews. Disadvantages. Reviews require the utmost effort towards the repeatability and rigour of the methodology. The methodology and search strategy will require refinement. This can be time consuming and data intensive. And finally, depending on the research question, a review methodology may not be feasible. So that was my student's guide to desk-based methodologies. Again, please feel free to reach out if you would like to know more about my research. And I have left some references as a start point if you would like to know more of any of these methods. Good luck!